Great. Uh, thanks, Alex. And thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm, uh, again, I'm Bob Chen. I uh, manage CDAC, which has been mentioned. Uh, I also am director of uh, CSEN, which is a part of the Earth Institute at Columbia University in New York. Uh, so we, our topic today is on sustainability. And uh, I think if uh, you had a chance to review the videos, uh, you'd hear a number of different uh, aspects of sustainability that people are concerned about. Uh, obviously, there's the, the scientific component of sustainability of the data, its consistency, its preservation, um, continuity, and so forth. Um, of course, big on everyone's mind is uh, financial uh, sustainability. Can data centers continue and maintain themselves in the long run, given different kinds of uh, uh, organizations and funding models. Um, I think there will be some discussion of the ex expertise needed to sustain um, our centers uh, and, and what happens with uh, generational turnover. Uh, and then of course, uh, we've already heard in panels, uh, the uh, technology and, and technical aspects of sustainability, what happens with new technologies like the cloud, um, uh, what happens with software that has a apparently shorter lifetime than the data we're managing. So those are all dimensions that uh, I think you'll hear about. And uh, again, as with the past, why don't we uh, have a very brief intro statements from the four panelists. Um, and we'll start with uh, WDC for ionosphere and space weather. Thank you, Bob. Uh, my name is Mamoru Ishii from uh, National Institute of uh, Information Communication Technology, Japan. As you know, it's a uh, uh, host of WDS IPO. And uh, I'm a director of uh, Space Environment Laboratory, and uh, we provide uh, space weather forecast services uh, operationally. And uh, we are also uh, working for WMO, uh, World Meteorological Organization, uh, DCPC, uh, data collection and uh, providing centers. And uh, from, since the last year, we, uh, as a part of uh, 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 IKO or Space Weather Center, we provide the Space Weather Forecast Service uh, to IKO, International Civil Aviation Organizations. So uh, we have a very long history to provide the Space Weather Forecast information operationally and uh, I'm very glad to contribute our, uh, our exper experience in this uh, session. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, great. Um, Thank you. Uh, next is Biological and Chemical Oceanography Data Management Office. Uh, Adam. Hi, folks. Uh, thank you so much for having myself and uh, the director of uh, the Biological and Chemical Oceanography Data Management Office, uh, Danny Kincaid, who's on the line as well. Um, so, yeah, I represent uh, that office, and our short acronym is called uh, VICODEMO. Uh, and I represent that office uh, as the technical director and co-PI in the United States. Uh, and we're so excited to be a part of uh, the world data system and looking forward to how we can contribute and, um, and uh, gain value from this community. Um, yeah, and so our repository is uh, primarily funded through grants at the US National Science Foundation. Uh, we're funded, uh, we have been funded since 2006. So we've been around for quite a while uh, and we're, we're really funded to sort of publicly access domain science um, from the community for the community uh, and biological chemical, biogeochemical research. And so we work closely with uh, individuals funded by US NSF uh, to get their data through the entire data life cycle. So curation, metadata creation, access, get it into an archive, uh, DOI, uh, and things like that. 
Um, and so today, I guess in the, the realm of sustainability, um, you know, we're funded on five-year grant cycles from NSF. So shifts in the data landscape, you know, really impact us uh, or can impact us seriously in our capabilities to respond to those. So, uh, and that would be things like data storage, uh, discovery issues, uh, presentation uh, of data. Um, and yeah, just, just community needs as they have uh, specific needs of us. You know, we want to be able to, to flexibly respond to those uh, needs as fast as possible with as little technical debt uh, as possible. And so in response to that, we're re refactoring our entire data infrastructure and centering it around an RDF data model. Um, and the reason there is really to just sort of migrate this valuable business logic, knowledge about where data is, how it's accessed, who can access it uh, from software into queryable data. Uh, and so that RDF data model has really been powerful for us. Um, it's been helping us describe where the data is located, uh, internal workflow for our data management team, um, the state of data, uh, who can access it, how, uh, and a whole host of other things that it's really just made it flexible to respond to those community needs and uh, big data challenges. Uh, so yeah, happy to talk more about that uh, on this panel. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Doug Schuster from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Thank you. Uh, I'm from the National Center for Atmospheric Research in the U.S. Uh, it was established in 1960, and it's supported by the National Science Foundation. It includes seven labs that collectively cover a breadth of research topics in the Earth and system sciences, from the effects of the sun and the Earth's atmosphere to the role of the ocean, and weather and climate prediction. Specifically, I manage the group that maintains the Research Data Archive at NCAR, which is one of several, several repositories at NCAR. And historically, what we did was bring data in to our center, which is a high performance computing center to support research. So we were bringing data into the compute to support research from the mid 1960s forward. And recently we've had to pivot to support PI generated data sets really to for them to fulfill their open access requirements in order to publish to journals. So that's been a bit of a challenge with us, with PIs starting to dump data over the fence to different repositories and not taking into consideration the budgetary impacts. And a lot of these PIs are running simulations that generate hundreds of terabytes of data and doing this. So we found that a sustainability challenge. So we put some policies in place recently to have PIs engage the repositories at the proposal phase of their projects so we can plan out budgets and experiments accordingly. So looking forward to hearing what others have to say and thanks for your time today. Thanks. And uh, last but not least, the World Data Center for Sunspot Index and Long-Term Solar Observations. Uh, Frederick. Hello. Klett. I'm Frédéric Plett uh, from uh, uh, the World Data Center CILSO in Brussels, and we care for the Sunspot Number Data Series, which is the base record uh, retracing the solar cycle over more than four centuries. Uh, our collection of data includes uh, more than 700,000 daily observations by more than 400 observers. And so this spans several centuries. This kind of data uh, has an impact well beyond solar physics because, well, it uh, also is used for climate studies, geomagnetism, and so on. We continue extending this series by coordinating a worldwide network of uh, 80 stations. And uh, we are hosted at the Royal Observatory of uh, Belgium in Brussels and essentially our resources are entirely dependent on the hosting institutes. We are hosted since 1981. We are a fairly small team of uh, three scientists and one uh, web uh, master. And uh, as I mentioned in my lightning talk, uh, financial sustainability is our main challenge for coming years. And I think we are an example of a small data center because I think the size of the data center has an importance about, uh, uh, well, what are the constraints you are facing in terms of sustainability. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, well, given how li limited 
much uh, how little time we have. Uh, I thought I'd just kind of get right to one of the points of the session. Uh, the subtitle is uh, making the case for domain repositories through value of information, operational use, and web services. And I think uh, the two space weather focused uh, uh, centers have actually alluded to, uh, you know, the fact that there are, are broader users of the data that, uh, you know, are interested in using. Uh, so I just thought maybe uh, everyone could comment about uh, this uh, issue of how to demonstrate value in the data you manage and what progress or not you've made in, in trying to uh, use that to justify the resources needed in the long term or even bring in external resources from outside the science community to, to support you. Um, so, Professor Ishii. Yes, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I have two aspects uh, for uh, discussing. Uh, one is, uh, yeah, uh, when I heard uh, as a, a panelist uh, talk, I feel very safe because uh, I hesitated to discuss about the money. <laughs> so I think uh, we cannot avoid to discuss the issue of funding. So uh, it is ideal uh, uh, for providing the uh, database uh, in free of charge and open access, but uh, we need money uh, for uh, building the uh, data storage and hiring uh, technical staff and building a secure uh, website and uh, uh, especially uh, this type digitizing the old data uh, for data rescue. So uh, providing these uh, funds, uh, we need some good uh, example of uh, business models. Now we also uh, funded uh, from the uh, MIC, uh, Ministry of International, Internal Affairs and Communication. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it means a uh, national budget, uh, but uh, uh, maybe we need another uh, sponsors for keeping the data, data space. And another aspect is uh, uh, the uh, motivation uh, to keep the uh, database. So uh, as I mentioned, we started to uh, service for IKO. It's an uh, operational use. Uh, and uh, uh, for building the database for IKO, the speed is very fast. Uh, comparing with uh, uh, some academic uh, discussions uh, because we have a very clear target uh, to clear the uh, 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 operation. So uh, it's a very great uh, motivation to build the uh, uh, sharing the data and uh, uh, building the uh, common uh, database. So thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, Adam, any comments on this? Sure, yeah. yeah. I think broad use of data uh, is certainly something that we've started to see at Bico um, You know, traditionally we've thought of ourselves as, you know, the actual measurements that people want, but, uh, you know, we've come in contact with uh, the omics community who really view our data as more metadata to their work. Uh, and so we've been really interested in efforts to describe the parameters and observations in our data sets uh, in a way that makes these sort of machine actionable um, so that, you know, that omics community can pull data from us and use it however they need. And so for us, that involves initiatives. I think in the last panel or two panels ago, someone mentioned the iAdopt um, RDA group, which is talking about how to describe these, these observations in machine actionable ways, connecting them to the semantic web, uh, ontologies and vocabularies. And so we found that very useful and have demonstrated some really nice use cases uh, in the omics side to, to get at that information. So uh, yeah, it's a really great question and uh, look forward to building out that capability across our entire data holdings so that uh, other disciplines can ask these interdisciplinary complex questions. Great, uh, Doug? In terms of how do we show the value of our services and the collections that we preserve, 
recently we've kind of followed the guidelines of the make data count initiative to start collecting and harvesting citations so looking at citation counts of papers that actually cite the data holdings that we have and we've gone through a few public and publicly available web apis to harvest that information and that's been very useful in terms of showing impact to science in terms of other metrics that we collect we look at all the various web services we provide and look at the number of users that are using those services, how much, how much data is reduced in terms of volume from petabytes to something that's able to be downloaded. And then we also look to our community for feedback to provide us basically feedback on what's working for them and what services do they need. So in terms of our sponsors, I say the big metric is what's the impact of science. And the one that we have now is the DOIs that's recently become available and citations to data sets that we can count. Thanks. Yeah, the funders is a big, always a big issue. Uh, Frederick? Well, one remark I have is concerning showing the, the value of what we do. Actually, we have a pretty high recognition of uh, what we uh, produce from our user community, but it's completely dispersed all over the world while our funding, uh, well, the decision makers who define our funding, in my case, actually, uh, uh, and, and maybe that's, that's what's specific to smaller data center, is completely disconnected from this uh, uh, community. And, and so as the community actually asks for more, because, well, they trust her, uh, they trust us, they, they they want to have more advanced data, fair data, and things like that, but uh, our resources don't follow. And so that's one thing I, I stressed in, in my lightning talk, is the, this disconnection, how to con better connect the community of users who is really uh, recognizing what we produce, uh, value what we do, and and decision makers who are more at the local level, which led to another remark is also the discrepancy with our worldwide role. People entrust data to our data center from all over the world. And we are also uh, providing data to a lot of scientists who rely on us for their research why the current structure of depending on the hosting institute is involving a, a national scale where of course considerations are often uh, turned to more lo local constraints political choices and things like that which puts i think data center in a well uh, more or less precarious situation because of course it leads to the, this uh, mismatch between the decisions taken in terms of resources provided especially on the long term to the data center and the community that must be st served so i think this requires a reflection and as it's at an international level that's where i think world it as the word it assistant may play a role as a platform for bridging those gaps okay well i know we're running low on time we started late but uh we're still running low on time um so maybe if I can just get everyone uh, to in two sentences or whatever to say what you think WDS could do to help you or to help all of us, you know, engage with funders, engage with diverse stakeholders, whatever, um, as kind of your concluding comment. So uh, let's just run through uh, quickly, Professor Yishi. Professor Ishii, do you want to say anything <laughs> so, about uh, what you see WDS's, uh, how, how WDS can help or how you'd like <laughs> to collaborate within WDS to address 
okay it's it's a very, very, issue. very uh, big question uh, for me because uh, I'm thinking uh, every time, but uh, I have no idea because uh, it's very difficult to discuss the uh, uh, data itself. Uh, we can discuss the uh, uh, specific data, for example, space weather, uh, but uh, uh, WDS should discuss uh, maybe uh, all uh, fields uh, data. Uh, it's very difficult because uh, when we discuss the uh, every field's data, uh, the uh, uh, character of uh, data should be anonymous. So we should discuss, uh, and uh, uh, at the time, uh, I don't know how do we discuss it in WDS. Uh, so uh, as uh, interoperability, uh, we can discuss uh, with the neighborhood uh, field, for example, uh, for space weather uh, to uh, meteorology or space weather to astronomy, but it's rather difficult to discuss with uh, us to uh, uh, economy or very far uh, field. So uh, if you have uh, any good idea, I want to ask you to uh, answer. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adam? Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, it'd be great for us to network with, uh, you know, those who have ideas on how to engage funders, you know, socialize them on the value of domain repositories and, you know, providing that to the research community. Um, so, yeah, I, I would kind of echo, um, you know, that same sentiment of, you know, we're kind of curious to find out more. We're kind of new in this space. So uh, it's been very informative so far uh, to be here. So thank you. Right. Uh, Doug? I'd like to hear more about how others are engaging their data depositors and end data users to make sure they're providing value to both of those communities. And Frederick. Uh, I think that um, a key player concerning sustainability uh, could, uh, are actually scientific unions that are representing uh, a whole communities of researchers by discipline. And so they overlap exactly with the community of users that the data servers are, the data centers are serving. And so I think unions could play a, a key role in, in terms of sustainability. And so uh, WDS should really uh, start a dialogue with the unions, I think, concerning those issues. And maybe another aspect is within uh, WDS, uh, maybe re also uh, uh, making the distinction between data center based on criteria that seems to make a difference when I listen to many talks. Uh, for instance, working on data that are currently produced or uh, past data leads apparently to a fairly clear difference in the terms in terms of sources of funding to which you have access and uh, the size also of the data center seems to play also a role in terms of uh, there in in particular uh, in terms of uh, financial sustainability uh, and uh, the ability to establish uh, links across uh, uh, communities. Okay, great, good, good points. I wish we had more time to follow up, but uh, thanks to everyone for uh, participating and contributing. And uh, I guess we'll pass on to the breakout.